Flare tube fittings must be tightened properly to prevent leaking. This type of fitting seals by means of the inverted flare in the fitting and the flare on the end of the tube, not the threads on the nut. The application of a thread sealant will not help to seal this type of fitting and is a waste of time and material. Here is a picture of a common T fitting cut in half showing the inverted flares on the three ports. And now we transform to a 3D model cutaway showing the assembly. As the brake line tube nut is tightened, it pushes the flare on the end of the steel tube against the inverted flare of the fitting. When properly tightened, the inverted flare in the brass fitting is deformed by the tubing, creating a visible sealing ring. And here is a picture of the sealing ring that was formed around a properly torqued fitting. It is important that the tube is properly aligned with the fitting to ensure a good seal. Even a slight misalignment can result in improper mating of the tubing flare and the inverted flare in the fitting. Here is a picture of a fitting that was at the correct torque, but the tube was misaligned. This created an improper sealing ring that resulted in a leak. This fitting was actually removed from an assembled vehicle that was leaking. Additional tightening of the tube nut would not likely resolve the leak and could result in mechanical failure of the fitting due to excessive torque applied. Hello, we're finally live. It is always important to use the proper tools. In this tutorial, I will be using a free hanging T-fitting as an example. When working with this type of fitting, you must use a backup wrench, either an open end wrench or a properly sized adjustable wrench. But for this tutorial, we're just going to have it clamped in a vise. For the tube nut, you must use a tube nut wrench. The tube nut wrench slides over the brake tube and it slides up and engages the flats on the nut. The tube nut wrench will engage five flats. Using an open end wrench, you run the risk of rounding out the flats on the nut. Installing the brake line into the fitting. Insert the tube nut into the threads and get the thread started. If you are unable to rotate the tube nut with your fingers, that means there is an angle on the brake line and there's tension and it's not going to be aligned properly. Wiggle the brake line back and forth until you can rotate it by fingers until it is fully set in the base and you can't pull up and down on the brake line. That one's fully seated and now you're ready to tighten. This is the proper tool for torquing down these fittings. This is a breakover type torque wrench. As you tighten down, it'll get to a point when it's at its preset torque limit, the handle will rotate slightly while the wrench end stays stationary. At that point you're done. It is at the proper torque setting. I found 120 to 130 inch pounds will be correct for new fittings. Now we're ready to torque this fitting, but first let's take a look inside. down inside the fitting we're going to see the cone. Right now that's a new fitting and you see there's no ring around the inside of that cone. So we'll come back and take a look at this same fitting after we get it torqued. Putting our brake line back down into the fitting. Making sure it can easily rotate my fingers all the way down. Grabbing our torque wrench, we're going to go about one half turn and wait for that wrench to break over. I don't know if you can see that on the camera, but we're at the torque setting. You can see the wrench breaks over and doesn't torque anymore. Let's see if we can get an overhead shot of this so you can get a better view. Coming in over the top and looking down on the wrench. As I tighten, you can see the handle rotates, but the wrench head does not. We're at the preset torque, and this fitting is now torqued to specs. 
Now we're going to remove this and take a look at the sealing that, that happened. We're going to use our standard tube nut wrench to take it apart. And now let's take a look inside. Come around to the top. Hopefully the lighting is good enough to where we can see a nice bright ceiling ring. All the way around the inverted flare which shows we have the correct torque and this brake line is not going to leak.